all of us as Ravens fans were extremely excited with the signing of Marcus Williams, complimenting the Ravens, you know, hopefully new, more diverse, and fundamentally sound defensive scheme um, under Mike McDonald. And then we were just ecstatic at getting a guy um, who's a pretty balanced offensive lineman in Morgan Moses. Played most of his career with, with Washington. Obviously played with the Jets last year. There's film of him floating around from 2020, I believe, maybe maybe 19, against T.J. Watt. So what I thought I'd do is take a look at what I thought was one of the most substantial games that the Jets had pay, this past year, which was their upset win over the Bengals. Where they, they really used a short passing game a ton. So some of these pass sets you're going to see from Morgan Moses are, you know, balls where it really kind of doesn't matter whether he wins or not. Now, the first two plays – out of the set, to be honest with you, is not going to be quite flattering about Morgan Moses. That's not my intention with this video. This is a uh, delayed screen to the halfback, and Morgan Moses is kind of hanging out. <laughs> uh, that might be part of the play design. The guy who he was supposed to block um, looks like the DN here, Hubbard. And on this motion out by the receiver, Hubbard goes with him. So there's really kind of nobody for... Morgan Moses to block here. That's why he's looking for work and kind of why he looks, you know, a little bit, I don't want to say lost, but not involved in the play here. All right, second play, play action concept. And in all of these plays, Moses is the right tackle. So he is here. And there's a tight end outside of him with a bunch set to the other side. Moses is just going to go down the line. Trying to, trying to work as much flow this way as possible and trying to pull people, you know, edge players, D-tackles, trying to pull them this way with the run fake to then open up, you know, one of these routes coming back from the other side or one that originated from the front side, you know, like the tight end running the clear out there. But in any case, neither of those two plays really shows you a whole hell of a lot about Morgan Moses. Same play from the end zone angle. You see he's just running down the line of scrimmage trying to pull – a D tackle or a DN down with him to open up the, the short passing game from Mike White. And of course he riddled the, the Bengals with play action stuff, screens, toss plays, which is how this first drive is going to culminate. I believe a, a touchdown on a, on a toss play third play here. He's at right tackle. Now he did go up against uh, Hubbard significantly. And if you're a Ravens fan, that should be more important to you than maybe film from two years ago. This is him taking on, a very capable pass rusher from one of the best defenses in the league. I mean, you if you don't think the Bengals have one of the best defenses in the league, I don't know what to tell you. Their performance in the postseason was amazing. Moses looks very balanced to me, conservative in his pass sets. He's not jumping at the first move. I feel like his arms are in good position to either make first contact or to counter – uh, the DN's rush in terms of the DN making first contact. So you can see the width that Hubbard has, how quickly Moses gets out here, and how conservative he is. I don't think he's a super aggressive guy. He's 6'6", 240, excuse me, 340, 6'6", 340. So he can accept the first hit as he did there from Sam Hubbard and still recover. Again, at right tackle. I'm not sure whether this is a run or a pass play, but you've got Hubbard here, and then the inside linebackers walked up outside of him. I think you get a stunt here through the B-gap, but I could be wrong. No, no stunt. Just a little play action. And he's athletic. For, for the size that he has, he's athletic. I think he's 30 years old. Hubbard tries to bounce outside. This is smooth. This is easy. Morgan Moses can do that against that level defensive end and the Ravens completely different situation from last year at right tackle. Not that not that McCarry wasn't good. You know, don't get me wrong, I appreciated his efforts. I thought he stepped in and, and did a nice job, particularly against the Chiefs and Chris Jones, but we basically ran the ball down their throat in a lot of cases. Look how smooth Morgan Moses is. He to, to, totally impressed. You guys tell me what you think in the comments section. Again at right tackle. Looks like Hubbard is still in, in a wide five. Okay, this is the one. I was one play ahead. Inside linebackers walked up. Hubbard's going to be free off the edge, and this inside linebacker is going to go B-gap. Looks like to me Moses steps down to take the inside rusher. This should look familiar to Ravens fans. Essentially, it's just a Miami game. 
it, it's not the same exact blitz. This inside linebacker is going to go B-gap. Moses is going to step down. You always want to take the guy who's got the most most direct path to the quarterback, and then Hubbard is free. But Moses may think that there's a back who's going to help out. What? I mean, he redirects well. Set, steps out first and then comes back in when he sees the blitzing linebacker. Very balanced stance. Look at that. That's a drill, by the way, that offensive linemen do, where they're pass setting, they're pass setting on the D end initially. And then the inside linebacker may or may not blitz. So they've got to stay in a balanced stance to be able to, you know, stay with this D end and whatever move the D end uses in his pass rush or redirect and then come back down to the B guy. That's a drill that those guys do every day. Oftentimes it's a warm up drill just to get your body in the right position. Um, to be able to defend against the edge rush and against a B-gap rusher. Right tackle again. Hubbard is in a stand-up now. And they got what looks like a, a four-eye, maybe a three-technique D-tackle inside of him. Inside linebacker blitzes again. Strong guy. Strong, if you ask me. You know, I think they're all strong. But gets, gets I say, stood up initially by this D-tackle but doesn't get moved back. So this D-tackle to me looks like he wins with inside hands on Morgan Moses. They're leaving the D-end Hubbard unblocked. Looks like to me the D-tackle wins there, but there's no put, there's no movement backwards. Look, Moses just stays on it, just stays on him. And maybe there's a hold there with the right hand. I'm not sure. We get the end zone angle. I'm giving you possessions. I'm not organizing these in an editing program. Um, I wanted to get this out as soon as possible. He's going to step down on this D-tackle. They're leaving Hubbard unblocked in this situation. You already know there was no vertical push by the D-tackle, 92, who, again, I think wins with his inside hands, but then tries to get extension. Moses just stays on him. It's not, not a successful run play. I'm just showing you what the man can do against a high-level defense. Not that Cincinnati came in there real motivated, uh, I obviously do not think they did. Oh, man, that's a nice block. Stepping out here on this uh, this edge rusher. That's not Hubbard, though. It looks like they've subbed in 96. Got the inside linebacker walked up again. Now they stem him outside. I like Morgan Moses. I, I think he looks like an underrated athlete for a 6'6", 340 guy. You, you watch his steps. Tell me what you think. The play, the play is not going, you know, this is not like a stretch play that's going to go inside his gap or maybe even, you know, try to get outside. So it's not like he's trying to reach the guy. He's just trying to get horizontal movement to create some running lanes, just like just like the center is here. I think he looks great. Maybe our expectations are low compared to what we saw last year with Villanueva, you know, when Phillips played some tackle in it. In a Denver game, I can't even remember the guy's name, the old tackle that the Bengals used to have, uh, Smith. You know, maybe our expectations are low, but I think this is a great signing. I think this is a great signing. Watch his feet work. Man, very technical guy, if you ask me. There's no lag in his technique at all on this screenplay. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, watch his commitment to his technique on the screen. It's his job. It's his job to sell the pass set and get this guy working upfield so then these other guys can release and, and and you know, then block out in front for the back. Great job. We need to run some screens, right? Maybe this guy can maybe this guy can convince us to run some screens because the Jets sure screened the hell out of the Bengals in that game. He is here. You're going to see the same play from the end zone angle. I'm going to move on to a couple of other uh, couple of other possessions from this game. Again, this is exclusively from the Bengals game. Let's move forward a little bit because we're working on almost 10 minutes now. Hopefully, Ravens fans are excited about this. I'm excited to do the video. All right, I believe this is it. So, again, at right tackle, it may be the next play after this one. That's a touchdown, actually. Yeah, he's selling a – it's a double pass. That's a pass interference. He's trying to sell a pass set. Get that DN to run a field. The DN sees the football thrown. Let's fast forward to the touchdown. I think this is a toss play. Right tackle here. Plays away from him. It's going to be a toss play. I think the score is up to this side. Offense is left. Defense is right. He's trying to run the angle. Not really doing much. Not really involved in the play. 
there. He's just trying to cut off that three technique, and he does so successfully. Maybe they got, maybe you would call him a four eye, and and not a three. In any case, he gets cut off by Morgan Moses. I like the technique with his hands. That's nice. Good timing. It's not just about hand placement and what you do with your hands. It's the timing of it. Watch this timing. Talk about this in a video about Chandler Jones a couple days ago. Okay, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna move forward. I am gonna promote my uh, Teespring. I mean, I'm gonna try to do that in every one of my videos. You know, consider checking out the Teespring and and um, you know, support me that way if you don't want to join the Patreon. Very plain design so far, to be honest with you. Um, on there. In any case, uh, let's move on to some more plays from that same game. We got the field's been flipped now. There's Morgan Moses at right tackle. And you're going to get a sweep. So this back, this guy in motion, I should say, is going to run here. What I love about this from Morgan Moses' standpoint is commitment. On the back side, your guard and tackle is taught. Take these angles here, and what you're, what you're taught to do is go get people if they're there, but if they're not, and, and a running back, or, the, or in this case receiver, cuts it back, your job is to get people going this way, get people moving this way, and create create that cutback lane. Maybe that's drawn too severe, but check out Morgan Moses on this, man. Commitment, 6'6", 340. He's an NFL player, so obviously he's a great athlete. So, but my standards ain't low for what these guys do. You don't see this all the time. You don't see this all the time. Backside tackle getting out here. He's looking for work at the linebacker level now. That's why this angle is is like this. But all these guys are flowing. They're flowing. They're fast flowing. So he says, all right, well, let me just go up to the safety. He doesn't get involved in the block. I'm just pointing out to you that the guy is capable. They're they're running a essentially toss play away from him where the, where the back is crossing face and the guy in motion is getting the ball. So he's going way out to our left, the offense's left. Morgan Moses' angle takes him here. He's trying to get a cutoff block in case that back, you know, tries to cut it back upfield. One of the schools I used to coach at that this was a base play of theirs was a toss play where the backside guard and tackle just ran the home run angle. I love it. Cool concept. Let's align and get out on people. Over here with a tight end on his side, so empty formation. He's got tight end trips to his side. I call that Trey. Should be a quick pass play, I believe. Yeah, so there's not much to tell here in terms of some of the stuff that's happening. But watch the feet. Watch the feet. And it's a, it's a tackle in the NFL, so he's got to get out there, right? I think he looks good. More than capable of doing, you know, great work compared to what we had last year. The offensive line was a sieve. I always like to compare him to the tackles on the other side. They're both getting out there similarly quick. This guy's taking on Hendrickson, and then Morgan Moses is taking on Hubbard. Two, you know, pretty damn good DNs, if you ask me. I like how he gets a shot in on Hubbard here. But he stays balanced. Everything is balanced. It's a short pass play. It's a three-step drop. So I understand there's no opportunity for a sack. I like how balanced Morgan Moses is, how efficient his movements are. All right, I'm going to go back to the uh, Teespring real quick. Just give one more plug on that. While I load up some other film. I don't need people seeing my file explorer all the time. This will be the last uh last possession I, I, I um I show. If you have any suggestions for what I could put to kind of decorate the uh some of the merchandise up, please give me some jet some suggestions. My first time doing uh, something like that in terms of merchandise selling it. It's done pretty good so far. I think we've sold like thirteen items. Uh, which has been nice. It's been fun. My wife has been pretty happy. Anyway, consider supporting either through that or the Patreon if you would. All right, last one that I'm going to show you. He's over here with a tight end who's off the line of scrimmage, so I call that a slot. But in any case, there's Morgan Moses right there. And you got a wide DN that he's taking on, which to me looks like Hubbard. Hubbard tries to dive inside. Very balanced. Smooth. Smooth. I mean, some people would say that's an overset, you know, but Hubbard is already working in here, so that's why it looks like a little more of an overset um, than I think it actually is. I think he's pretty balanced. Anyway, he takes him back inside, gets help from the guard. You get the end zone angle. So when we say overset, in case you're not sure, we mean somebody who would overset too far. I'm going to draw it too dramatically. Who would overset too far and then open themselves up to an inside move by an edge rusher, if you're not familiar with the term. Very in control. Let's put it this way. If Morgan Moses was in the NFL draft right now, where would you rank him at tackle? 
based on what you're seeing here. Not based on what I'm saying, because some of the stuff I say might be inaccurate or might be, you know, not great uh, description of offensive line technique. I'm not an offensive line coach. Where would you rank him as an offensive lineman if he was in the NFL draft right now? Where would you rank him? I'm interested to hear the responses. I kind of have my own opinion, but it might be a little bit of an uneducated opinion. I like how how they got this wide D tackle, but Moses is, is able to get out here to this D end. He's able to get out here to the D end. He's not going to be bothered by these wide edge rushers, at least from what I see. If you don't think that Hubbard and Hendrickson, you know, it's not Hendrickson on right now, it's 96. He's a good player too. If you don't think Hubbard and Hendrickson are quality NFL DNs, I don't know what to tell you. That defense only gave up 19 second-half points in the AFC. I've talked about this many times. We're approaching 15 minutes here on this video. That That's a quality defense with two quality defensive ends. Trick, another trick play by the Jets, complete. So there's not much to glean or gather from that in terms of uh, Morgan Moses. I'm running out of steam here. A couple more plays. We're going to cut this out. Look, I think this is a great signing. I think for $5 million a year, 30-year-old guy, I get it. I get it. You know, an interception on a tip ball. Look at the move, man. He's not, he's not going to get involved in a tackle, but that guy is six foot six, 340 pounds. Ball's tipped on this little slant to, I think that's Crowder. Bates going to get the interception. And watch Morgan Moses move. That's more distracting than anything, probably. Hell of an athlete for a big man. Committed to his technique. Experienced. Played at a high level for many years. You know, you got all the things about him not missing, not missing, um, you know, games or snaps or anything. Look, I am, I'm on board with this for this price tag. I think it gives the Ravens another option. You know, they've got Macari, who seemingly can play anywhere. You got Morgan Moses that they just signed, very experienced, capable, smart. Who knows what's up with Ronnie Stanley? It'd be wonderful if he could come back completely healthy. And then, and then you have James. I thought that was a smart investment as well. I, I have to think that if they need, if if Ronnie Stanley comes back healthy, and we've got Morgan Moses and Macari's there, that maybe James is a guy who gets cut later on. So I have to think that there can't be much of a penalty for the Ravens. They wouldn't have signed him to that type of contract if there was the possibility existed that they would, you know, have there would be a penalty for them cutting him. They would have to eat some of that salary. I have to think that James was quite desperate to sign anything after that, you know, after being injured and missing the better part of, I guess, two, two and a half seasons now. Look, let me know what you think in the comment section. I'm trying to make the case that this is a, a very good offensive lineman. Is he top Is he top six, eight, ten in the league at right tackle? Probably not. He's somewhere, somewhere in that mid-tier range. He's good enough for the Ravens to look at it and say he's a drastic improvement on what we had last year. And hell. I mean, he would have started – this guy would have started for the good Ravens offensive lines that we've seen in the past three, four years. Uh, not that last year's was any damn good. They were terrible. But even going back 6, 8, 10, 12 years, I think Morgan Moses is a starter on pretty much almost every offensive line um, you know, that we've had, except for the year, obviously, when we had Orlando Brown as the right tackle and Ronnie Stanley as the left tackle. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. Appreciate you all supporting the channel.